This Only Zero Carbon dot org video addresses the most important question of the most important issue of all time, and that is global warming. How hot can it get? This is the question which is not being asked or addressed by policy making on climate change at all. And luckily, because of a strange event that happened a couple of years ago in the U.S. and for data provided for the event by Oak Ridge National Laboratory, we are able to take a look at it. Here's the event, Climate War Games, reported in Nature Journal in August of 2008. These role-playing negotiations using negotiators and strategists looked at the worst-case scenario, unlike policymakers and government leaders. The worst-case scenario is A1F1 by the IPCC, and they looked at the worst, that is the hottest time of the year. And the reason why it's so important for us to look at the worst heat is for our fuel security and for our health security. Because in both cases, it's the extremes, and it's the extreme of heat which um, uh, can ruin our uh, food security and also ruin our population health security. The limiting factor for agriculture is heat and drying. In the case of health, it's the extremes of heat. Um, this is when people die in heat waves and um, uh, the most vulnerable people are the most young amongst us and the oldest amongst us. In, in addition, however, those with chronic uh, health disorders are also more vulnerable to extremes of heat. A quick explanation of the worst case scenario of the IPCC, which they call A1F1. Well, here it is. It's the worst case anticipated scenario on global greenhouse gas emissions and it's this light blue line here and we are on this track. The worst case on emissions leads to the worst case on global average temperature increase which in 2007 the IPCC assessed at an increase of 4 degrees C by 2100. And this is the light blue temperature line here. However, this increase includes a risk of a temperature heating of up to over 6 degrees C by 2100. In fact, a 5% chance of a heating of over 6.4 degrees C. And this is the track we are on. Okay, time to play climate war games, or for our purposes, um, uh, human climate security game. And here is the map of the global, the global temperature increases to 2050 on the worst case scenario A1F1, which we are on today, and the data provided by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So the um, uh, temperature differences here are from the year 2000 to 2050. Normally we take the baseline as 1900. IPCC says to correct to 1900 add 0 0.5 degrees C extra. So you'll see that in July at 2050, the uh, mean temperature is 2 degrees. So from 1900, that's 2.5 degrees C. We, of course, are interested in the uh, regional heating and the worst case scenario of the regional heating, which you'll see is 3 to 5 degrees C. So add another 0 0.5 to 1900 and we get heating up to 5.5 degrees C. So let's have a look at the areas. Large uh, area in uh, continental North America. Um, uh, Greenland is heated uh, up to 5.5 degrees C in some region. A large uh, area in continental Europe heated up to 5.5 degrees C. Um, North Africa here. Um, uh, the uh, Middle East here heated up to 5.5 degrees C. Also this strip here, this little strip here off the uh, coast of Siberia, this is where the methane hydrates are on the seabed of the East Siberian Sea for those who know of the catastrophic consequences of melting methane hydrates. Now I have to take you back quickly to those IPCC temperature increase scenarios. You remember that we are on A1F1, worst case, IPC in 2007 had us at 4 degrees by 2100 up to uh, 6.4 degrees. Well, the latest um, uh, computer modeling by MIT and Hadley has us headed not to 4 degrees C but to 6 degrees C 
and a uh, risk of up to therefore over 8 degrees C. In other words, we are now on a heading at the absolute top limit risk of A1 F1. Here's the um, computer uh, model map of the uh, temperature increase provided by Oak Ridge National Laboratory for 2100. Uh, we'll go straight to the worst case on this, and this is July again, and the worst case is 5 to 12 degrees temperature increase. We're going to take the top, being 12, and we're going to do this because we know that we're on, in actual fact, the absolute top range of the worst case scenario of A1F1, which this model is based on. So uh, all of this dark red area then is a global temperature increase of up to 12.5 degrees C in July, and that of course is huge. And most of uh, North America is involved, Alaska is involved here when the, where there are methane hydrates. Uh, Greenland um, uh, has a region warmed up to 12.5 degrees C extra. Most of Europe here, um, most of uh, Russia, Siberia, the Siberian Sea, all heated up to another 12.5 degrees C in the summertime when the methane hydrates are. Uh, Northern Africa, a large portion, um, practically all South Africa and the nations above South Africa large part of uh, Australia, um, large part of the uh, most of the Middle East in fact, and look at uh, Antarctica, the um, uh, Antarctic uh, continent um, ice mass. So um, a totally catastrophic situation here clearly. Why so? Well clearly all our agricultural regions are heated beyond tolerance of their crops. And that's all of them. And for most of humanity it will get even hotter because most of us are living and the movement is towards increasingly living in cities and urban areas. And that brings in in the summertime the urban heat island effect. Living in uh, cities where there's a lot of black asphalt, tall concrete buildings and uh, a lot of concentrated air pollution the uh, city regions are heated by an extra, look at that, 3 degrees C. This heating is funneled out to the urban areas by the urban heat island effect, so the large urban areas are heated by an additional 2 degrees C. So, so how hot will it get where most of us are living? By The numbers are staggering. By 2050 in the cities it will be in the height of summer 8.5 degrees C hotter and in the urban areas it will be 7.5 degrees C hotter. This is a planet where nobody is going to want to live. By 2100 in the cities it will be 15.5 degrees C hotter and in the height of summer it will be up to 14.5 degrees C hotter in the urban areas. And This will be a planet where most people are not able to live. Clearly what our scientists must do for us is they must address the question global warming, how hot could it get, and they must do it with the utmost urgency. And we still haven't finished answering the question how hot can it get, because to do that we have to take a look at how the planet will be hit by the additional heat from the Arctic summer sea ice meltdown and from the additional heat from Arctic carbon methane feedback emissions, and that's the next video of course.